Hello lovely people, Nicole here. It's mid-season in my garden here in zone 7 and I have a lot of harvesting to do today so I thought you could help me and I could show you everything that's been growing here. So we're going to start here at my arch trellis where I'm growing my cucumbers and I have two different kinds here. This one is called Natsu Fushinari, which is a Japanese variety that I have absolutely fallen in love with. It is a huge, well, long cucumber, I should say, but it remains nice and skinny with not a lot of seeds in the middle, a very thin skin and a delicate flavor. These have gotten as big as my, from my fingertips to my elbow. They are so big. I want to let that get a little bit thicker, but there are others that I can harvest in the meantime. That's on this side of the trellis. On the other side of the trellis, I'll so show you in a second, are um, cucumbers called um, market. There's a number attached to that. I got these both from uh, Baker Creek heirloom seeds. The more standard sort of squat, thick uh, cucumber, which is also delicious. It's very prolific. However, I am preferring this kind this year and they're doing so well on this arched trellis. Now I'm standing in the middle of my cucumber arch and what I should be doing is pruning some of these lower leaves, these older leaves that are, as you can see, are kind of getting tired and being replaced by fresher leaves up above. So it will open up this archway again. I'm just gonna clip these while I'm here, throw them on the ground, collect them later. Uh, this will help me in finding the cucumbers cause, oh, here's one <laughs> that I will come back and clip um, because it's so shady down here. They're not really getting any sun anyway and it will help me find my cucumbers. I'm growing three different kinds of eggplant this year. Two varieties are new to me, and the one I'm most excited about is this one called Ping Tung. Now, before I show you what that looks like, I want you to see how beat up these eggplant leaves are. Um, this is mostly uh, flea beetle damage. Uh, they're little, little black beetles that will hop when you try to, like jump like fleas when you try to get them off, but they will not kill your plant. So I have not sprayed these plants with anything, not even neem oil, nothing. I've just kind of brushed them off when I see them, try to kill them. Uh, but as you can see, the plant is doing very well. And you know, that's kind of my philosophy in the garden. If I feel like the plant can muscle through, I try not to intervene. And I hope that the predators, uh, the predatory bugs in my garden will do the work for me. Now let me show you what this one looks like. It's beautiful. Look at the color on that. These are beautiful. And they grow long and thin like this. They have such thin skin that you don't have to peel them. You just slice them up and saute them in whatever you want. Gorgeous, ping tongue. Let's clip it. The, these can grow a little bit longer than this, uh, but this is a good size. I will pick this one. And there's a few more growing here. And I have a plant over here. Here's a little baby one. I don't know if you can see that. My clippers are in the way. Here's a little baby one. That'll be next. <laughs> the other new variety I'm growing this year is called Casper, <laughs> as you can see. And I love this kind of little variety because it could hold a clue to why we actually call these eggplant. Now I'm growing five different kinds of tomatoes. There are six plants here. I have two green giant. I have 
orange jazz, pineapple, black brandy wine, and Thorburn's terracotta. Now I grew this particular variety last year. It has a beautiful orangey brown uh, skin and a very complex flavor. But the best part is that it always ripens ahead of all the other varieties, in my opinion. And I have a few that are, are ready to be harvested. Now, I do notice that one of them has a peck out of it. I have a gang of catbirds that come into my garden and this year, as opposed to other years, have been pecking at my ripe tomatoes. So the good thing about tomatoes is that you can harvest them slightly underripe and they will continue to ripen in your kitchen. That's what I should have done to this one. Uh, I waited just a little bit too long, but I'll just cut that part off and eat it just the same. <laughs> Now I've been growing my cherry tomatoes up my flat panels this year. I have four varieties. Our favorite from last year, which is Brad's Atomic Grape. I'm also growing black cherry, blue cream, and what's the other one? Isis candy. <laughs> now, I mentioned those catbirds. I've been leaving a little bit more foliage than normal on these cherry tomatoes just to hide the tomatoes as they start to color up so the birds don't see them as well. But something that I've observed this year is that I have two varieties with purple shoulders on them. Uh, the Brad's Atomic Grape and the blue cream. And I have found that the birds have not pecked those at all. So maybe they can't see the purple color as much. I'm not sure. This kind of cracking can occur when there is um, excessive water. And we had a big rain the other day. So that just happened to a few of my tomatoes, but they're still perfectly delicious. also swimming in beans right now. I'm growing three different kinds, a bush type called red swan, a climber called barlotti, and chickpeas or garbanzos. Now I've done a whole video just about garbanzos, so I'll link that at the end. Right now I just want to say that I have picked so many beans that I've decided that I'm now going to let the barlotti um, mature so that I can pick the bean fresh, not dried, um, but before I was um, picking the pods immaturely and just eating them like a nice flat kind of green bean. But now I'm letting them get mature so that I can then take them out of the pod and steam them or saute them and eat the bean itself. Some of you may have noticed this big red leafed plant. This is called red amaranth or Chinese spinach. And I'm actually growing it as a trap plant, meaning I haven't harvested it at all. I have just been letting it get munched up uh, by flea beetles and cucumber beetles and squash beetles who happen to like it as well, hoping to draw them away from the crops that I have been harvesting. But it is guys actually truly delicious. You can saute this or like my Indonesian friend does, makes a wonderful soup with this. So um, I'm waiting for the blooms to come. There you have beautiful uh, reddish colored blooms, uh, but you can eat it too. So we have our harvest. Now it's time to cook with it. I am a pretty intuitive cook, so I love recipes. I will read recipes and then sort of internalize them and then make them my own. If you want to learn to be a more intuitive cook, I have a recommendation. Meet Julie Yoon, a chef and kitchen coach who shares her knowledge and secrets on Skillshare. Her class, Kitchen Confidence, Practical Tips for Cooking with Intuition, gives you the basic building blocks to prepare tasty meals that you can make with whatever ingredients you have on hand. I love her down-to-earth nature. She cooks in a normal kitchen. There's nothing intimidating about the way she cooks, and she explains everything really clearly. 
Julie is just one of the many incredible teachers you'll find on Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of classes for creators, from cooking to gardening, photography to yoga. It's completely ad-free. Most of the classes are under 60 minutes, so you can focus on what you really need to know and then get busy applying those skills in the real world. And the first thousand of you, my lovely subscribers, who click the link in the description below will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. I have one more recommendation for you. Last season, I made a big lunch from the harvest in my garden. I'll link it right here so you can watch what I did. In the meantime, I'll see you back in the garden very soon. Bye, lovely people.